do a quick flip through of this um, envelope journal and I made it by covering envelopes with napkins, paper napkins, uh, separated down to one thin layer and I used um, Liquitex um, matte medium and uh, in the two books I've used well more than half of the bottle and I'm using these little craft brushes for putting the glue down this one is actually pretty soft it's a children's paintbrush from um, Michael's or Aaron Brothers, I'm not sure. And then there are these. These are fine once once they lose all the loose bristles that you start with. And some nice long scissors just for trimming. And waxed paper. Okay, so this book is actually larger then mm, another one that I'm going to show you. I think I'm going to show you first how they're put together. Take this one away. So this is a, a slightly smaller, kind of a standard American greeting size envelope. The first page Now let's see. All right, I haven't glued those yet, all right? All right, this is glued in. So what you do is you cover the backs of your envelopes with a thin, just the one ply of a decorative napkin. Put down a coat of matte medium, lay this carefully on top, and uh, carefully brush again with medium from the center out to keep it down, and then get away from it or you're going to get holes in it. Some of them are tougher than others. You will do that on top of your uh wax paper or um, parchment paper, whatever you like to work on. You're not going to use newsprint for that because what you want to do is be able to pull your envelope away from um, where the napkin will get glued down to the non-stick surface. Okay, then after you've done that, you go through and you stick waxed paper inside the envelopes in order to do this side. And again, you put the matte medium on, lay your, env uh, your one ply, printed ply of the napkin on top, put it down gently, brush out, put some more matte medium on top, and brush out. You can leave a, quite a bit around because when it's dry, you're going to come through with a nice long pair of scissors to very carefully trim it off. In trimming it off, you want to make it as neat as possible. Whoops. Without cutting away the bottom of the envelope because we want to have these pockets. So that's how the envelopes look. Then what you do, I don't have any single ones here, is here's a basic structure. Okay. 
you take that envelope. This is folded back, not over. That's the key. Stick it inside an envelope. Turn the page. That's what it looks like. Stick that in. And that's going to be your back. The first page is actually a little different than all the others in that you take and you insert your first envelope like so, okay? But you don't do anything with this part of your first envelope, okay? You leave it. Then your second envelope is going to go in like that. You leave that out. And you're going to leave it out until you get all the way to the end. Okay. You will have glued all of these down once you've decided what you're doing. You're just going to glue this part and stick it in and glue it to that part of the envelope. And in order to do that, again, what you do is you put waxed paper there to make sure that it sticks to the right side of the envelope. Okay. Well, that's your basic thing. When you have finished them all and gotten them all glued together, then you take this and even it all up nicely and you drag this guy over. You will have pasted an envelope, uh, a napkin over this whole thing, you bring this guy over, glue it down nice and tight, and there you have a book. You fold this a little bit to give it shape. It feels real good. The uh, Mod Podge for the cover gives it a little bit more leathery than using the uh, gel medium. So here is one that I finished. And by finished, it means it's ready for me to glue other pictures into or put some pockets in as if there weren't enough already. Make tags for um, some stick journaling cards into the pockets for use. There's a lot to do. And I have some other envelopes, different sizes that I can make. These are uh, 14 pages or 14 envelopes all together. So, here we go. I just took my nice envelope stash. Now you see, see this has a nice pocket here that you can put things in. You can put other things on here. And it's a good idea to do this side first and then put them together without gluing them and look to think what you want on the facing pages because some of them can get really confusing looking. I think this is nice together. So I got my, my uh, large envelope stash that I've had for a while and I put it with my napkin stash. This is nice. This was just a little bit of a one of the middle sheets of a three-ply napkin. And I just used it to clean off my um, hexagon stamp. And I had it at hand. And I put it on. And, you know, mostly I did a whole page of just the napkin. But a few of them are these bits and pieces that are fun. This is bits and pieces, and there's this overlay um, like this. 
I mean uh, the under part and then the overlay of these silver ones on it. That's the real fun part of the napkins. They're very, very thin. So with a good glazing medium. And when we're talking about bees, I'm just loving bees. And right now outside, my bottle brush tree has bees all, all around it. They collect pollen off the tips of all the little bitty red things that come out on the bottle brush. This one was a three-ply napkin, and the first ply comes off white, and the second ply actually picked up color from the first layer. Usually it's just this first layer that we use. Yeah, see, this is why you get that paper in there. But this has all been trimmed down nicely, and sometimes uh, you can just take the edge and flap it over like a washi tape. And I may cut some little strips and make uh, fake washi tape with uh, the matte medium and strips of the same napkins. I'm trying to use patterns once on this place and once on that place throughout. And I didn't even get all my napkins into here. Hmm. So another overlay. And then there's this one, which is kind of bright, and I overlaid it with this. Um, British anthology of sea life and corals, which I really like. And then I used a bunch of scraps to make this one. And this was, again, this was a second sheet uh, from... No. One of these. And so I put that in and I can go in and color that for fun. And this is one of the first napkin I got. And then there's the back. And so you see here, all of these have a pocket. On this one, this is the front of the envelope. And then I just didn't leave the pocket. I just brought the front one tightly around the back and I glued it down. And this I glued with um, Aileen's tacky glue. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to figure out what kind of work you do in these. It feels so good. It's a nice weight, a nice size. It lies flat. Some of it is, reminds me of wallpaper, old wallpaper from a long time ago. The feel of it. Anyway, thank you for watching. And, um, oh, I'll flip through the other one while it's in progress. Might as well. All right, give you a quick flip through here. And figuring out which things to combine with each other. See, this isn't glued yet, but it's a good way to keep them together. This, by the way, is a tag. The envelope would have cut down to here, and I had put this moth or butterfly on there. And the antennas are sticking up. And I thought, well, what can I do there? That's pretty... So I just took a regular tag that's, it's this long here, and glued it behind so that that would have something to support it. Here's this British anthology. And this, I don't know, it came out with a funny line across. It just did. And I like some of the shapes there.
And that was an interesting choice to make, but it works. See, once these are glued in, it's going to be lying nice and flat, just like that. Hmm. This kind of calls for a map of the USA. I'm looking at it. I love looking at these when I get them onto YouTube. Uh, just kicking back, putting my feet feet up and thinking about them. But I can see it here. There are things happening that might be very interesting to do that I can see just on the screen of my camera. Okay, and then here. This one was all going to be flowers and birds, but I decided to put a little bit of sea life in. And then here is that second page and then there's just the shadow of color in these two which the napkin does have so the second ply of a two or three ply napkin these two work together here's some of the stuff that i left on so you just take that when it's dry and it's even easier to cut with a little bit of the medium on it and just cut very carefully. Well, I was close to the microphone there. <laughs> Hope I wasn't doing any heavy breathing. This is the kind of stuff that causes you to do a little heavy breathing. I am going to have to go through here. Maybe I'll put washi tape on all of these because I think I... No, I guess these are safe. I need to do something to neaten up the edges without cutting holes in the envelopes. Here's one. That I left the... Oh, here we go. I can just demonstrate this. I'll walk right around here. You see that the napkin is glued to the waxed paper. So here you don't have to be quite as careful because... It's not attached to anything. You're not going to be opening up the pocket. And here, there. Here. The nice sharp scissors with a long blade help you to line up with the envelope and cut straight and cut away that excess. I think I'm going to cut away envelope if I cut any more. So, for example, here I could put some more matte medium on and just fold it over and squeeze it. Okay. So, and then your floor is these little bits of paper are almost like glass shards. They're so tiny and they're covered in plastic. Okay. And, whoop, I see even more. There's always more. Now this was, this is a board, uh, napkin, but mostly a border. So I went for the tropical birds there and the jungle print. But then I decided to 
contrast it with the British thing. These, the mo the uh, gel medium really brought the pink out on these. I bet it's really bright on on the computer screen. Then this was nice. This is that like like the Wedgwood Blue or Blue Willowware. The borders of it have these nice curls in them that are like ocean. So I used some of those scraps for that to make this. I used that watercolor tissue underneath and and I put the tissue of the sea life on top of that and I put the blue on top of that. I like the way that came out real well. And here's the here are the two again contrasted. And this I've already trimmed. I did a quick trim on the dry part. You can't cut this when it's wet. It just gets crumbly and weird. So that one needs to be cut. Trimmed, I mean. And this one is quite nice. I've got several layers on there. Um, just this was off of one of the napkins that I put on top of strips of flowers that I put this silver and beige napkin over. Then I put this over a butterfly there to bring it out. I think that's real pretty. So it's fun to overlay. And so this is my last page. I haven't done anything on it yet. And then that one will be done. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Again, I'm getting gearing up to be doing some watercolor videos. I don't have a workstation set up yet, but I've got some changes towards normalcy coming back into my life. Um, it probably might be chaos for a little while in order to get it there, but... Uh, the mess of the last five years is winding up, so um, I should be able to build myself a little spot that I'll be permanently working. I've been working on the kitchen table, and I need to stop doing that because that's where there's also a beautiful view. Unless I'm painting the view, of course. Okay. Thank you. And... I'm always up to something and I really enjoy taping it and sharing it. It inspires me to know that someone else will look at these. Um, and I'm really happy with the way these turned out. I got two books. I think each one took me about two days. Um, there's drying time involved and all of that. So, thank you.